Good morning, everybody. I'm Muriel Bowser, the mayor of Washington, D.C. I am joined today by Chief Conti, uh, members of uh, our public safety agencies, and we are located here at the John A. Wilson Building to answer questions about body worn camera footage that MPD released this morning. Um, the footage is from the officer involved shooting that happened last Saturday and resulted in the death of 31 year old Kevin Hargraves Sherrod. I want to start by saying no matter the circumstances, any loss of life is tragic. We know that Kevin was well loved and that this is a traumatic response for his family, uh, a traumatic loss for his family and friends. I also want to be very clear to his family and to the community as a whole that this is an active investigation. Uh, the video is now with the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia for review. In addition to the United States Attorney's review, uh, MPD uh, will still need to conduct its own internal review. Unfortunately, as is uh, often the case, or sometimes the case, the body-worn camera footage doesn't answer all the questions we have or that the community will have. We release this footage so that the community can see what we see, but again, this remains an active investigation. With that, I'd like Chief Conti uh, to share a, re a report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to echo uh, a couple of comments that the mayor uh, has made uh, so far, uh, this is an active investigation. It's an ongoing investigation. And uh, per the law for the District of Columbia, we're required to release body-worn camera footage that is uh, in the greater public interest within five days, and we're doing so with the facts that we have established at this point. Uh, this information, as we gather it, it then goes to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the U.S. Attorney's Office to conduct the criminal uh, investigation. Uh, initially, when this uh, incident happened a few days ago, uh, obviously there's reporting around it. Things change. We learn other things. Uh, but again, all, just all the way around, this is a very tragic uh, situation. Any loss of life in our community is one that I think it hits it hits everyone, uh, you know, and especially the family uh, in this case. So uh, I'm going to go through uh, the information that we have so far. As the mayor mentioned, the video uh, has been released. Uh, that video has also, uh, the footage of the video has also been shared with the next of kin uh, in this case. And this is not easy for anyone, but I will go through the information that we have. Uh, I'm here to provide a briefing and answer questions related to the fatal officer involved shooting incident from this past Saturday. As a reminder, again, this is still an ongoing investigation. And the information I'm providing today consists of facts that we know at this point in time. Uh, first, at approximately 4.02 p.m. on Saturday, July 30th, our fourth district officers responded to a call in the 900 block of Longfellow Street Northwest for the report of a shooting. A witness stated that two dark colored vehicles opened fire on a group of males in the block. Officers located two juvenile males, one age 17 and one age 15, with gunshot wounds in the auto zone parking lot. Ultimately, three high capacity full, uh, loaded firearms were found on the scene, two of which were fully automatic uh, firearms. Approximately two minutes later, another witness called 911 to report the shooter was spotted in the alley tossing something under a vehicle and provided police with a description of a person, of the person, a black male with short hair wearing a white shirt and black pants. At 4.11 p.m., officers were on the scene speaking with this witness when they located a firearm under the vehicle and were alerted that the individual was still in the alley. Officers spotted this person and a brief foot chase began until our members witnessed him jumping into a white sedan with several other people inside of the vehicle. The vehicle sped off. A lookout was broadcast over the radio for the vehicle and occupants and occupants for its potential role in the shooting. A fourth district sergeant spotted the car, activated his emergency lights and sirens, and engaged the vehicle in a pursuit uh, that went several blocks. 
the vehicle in its efforts to flee the police struck a curb adjacent to Fort Slocum Park in the area of 3rd and Madison Street Northwest. Three occupants exited the car and ran through the park. Those three individuals are unknown to us at this time and we are seeking to identify them. The driver of the vehicle exited moments later and ran into the park as the MPD sergeant pulled behind the car still with his lights and sirens activated. The sergeant partially exited the marked police MPD cruiser, that shouted gun, 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 gun five times and fired a single shot uh, at uh, our decedent now known as uh, uh, Kevin Hargrave Shirt. Uh, recovered next to Mr. Hargrave Shirt was a loaded semi-automatic nine millimeter pistol. MPD rendered aid before he was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced deceased by medical staff. The U.S. Attorney's Office is responsible for the criminal investigation and, and MPD's internal affairs is assisting with gathering every piece of information available. Once that has been completed, we will conduct an administrative investigation. The involved sergeant uh, has been a member of the department for 17 years and is assigned to the 4th District. He remains on administrative leave. And at this point, those are the facts that we have that we know as of today. And again, all the information that we have and any information that comes in from community, any videos, cell phone footage or anything, we will continue to share that information with the U.S. Attorney's Office as the criminal uh, uh, investigation as that continues to take place. So uh, we're in no way, nowhere near uh, at the point, I'm sure, uh, you know, there are questions about whether it was justified, unjustified. We're nowhere near being able to uh, make that determination at this point, just based on the information that we have uh, so far. So at this point, uh, with the information that I have relayed, I can I can take whatever questions from the press that the press may have. Yes, uh, Mayor Leonard Fleming, DC News Now. Can you tell us what you thought of the video? I, I know it's under investigation, but when you watch that video and the family members are here, what did you think uh, when you what, of what you saw? Uh, I will say um, what you have just heard the chief articulate. Uh, we never want to see any of our community event, uh, members involved um, in a, a, a gun exchange, um, and that includes our police officers and those that they are, are, are seeking uh, to stop. Uh, and so what we know uh, is that we have to investigate fully investigate. Uh, you know, uh, in the District of Columbia, the United States Attorney, who is independent from the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, investigates police shootings, uh, and we have to let that, guess, the, that investigation happen. Yes, in the back. Okay, we're going to ask, hold on, hold on, ma'am. We're going to, we, our practice is to answer questions from the press. No, the you have to answer my, my brother. That's my brother. Yes, ma'am. And you guys are saying, gun, gun, gun. That never happened on that video. I seen it. It never happened. And you talk about gun exchange. That never happened. Don't do that. Okay. So do that. that is what, what we said, ma'am. What we said from the outset is what we know right now is what we can see on the video. And then don't say gun, gun, gun. Okay. So the None video, the video has been released. And people can see um, and confirm what the chief has said. Yes. Uh, Matthew Torres of WSA 9 for Chief Conti. Um, was, was he positioned at all? Was he running away from the officer mm -hmm. when uh, he started firing the shots? Mm -hmm. He was running from the vehicle uh, at the time, and I think that as we go through the investigation, obviously the video has been uh, released, and the body-worn camera is here, which is catching really the frame of the door. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you cannot see you know, exactly what he was doing at that point, which is why we're not able to make a, a, a final determination to say, hey, that this is whatever. He is running, certainly he is running, but again, we're not able to make a final determination based upon uh, what we saw, which is again, which is why the investigation has to continue at this point. I have a Hi, question. Uh, Asia Drain, WNU, and BCS. I think there just there's a need maybe for some clarification about um, what's required of a command before firing. Yeah. Um, the officer did say gun, gun, gun five times. Yeah. Um, but he just says four, but. What so uh, in an incident where you have, or incidents where officers are saying gun, 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 and again, we have to 
we have to really kind of understand, like ask, ask this officer, hey, why did you say that? But I can tell you just through my training and experience, uh, a lot of times that is a, a, a command of warning, uh, warning to other officers that are in the area. Also in this video, uh, just off to the left, there's like a moon bounce, there are some kids there, there are people around that. I don't know if the warning was for them. I don't know if the warning was, the other officers had not pulled up on the scene. I don't know why the member said what he said at the time that he said it. But again, when you're going through an investigation, certainly we wanna know the answer to that right now, but I would be speculating, it would be premature and it would jeopardize the outcome of the investigation for me to say, hey, yeah, this is the reason why uh, that was said. Again, we know from the video um, that the officer said gun, 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 five times. Uh, but again, why he said that, um, that, that uh, I, we'd have to find out from him why he said that. Yes. Is there a requirement to ask for a suspect to disarm, like, before? No. So when you talk about uh, requirement, I mean, in this case, you had a marked police vehicle uh, with lights and sirens going uh, behind a vehicle that had just traveled up the street, leaving from the area where a shooting had occurred. Uh, and that same vehicle went the wrong way on the street uh, with police in pursuit, crashed into a curb. So I think it's fair to say that the occupants of the vehicle uh, realized that the police uh, were trying to stop them. And then the, when the three individuals jumped out of uh, the vehicle, again, you're left with the one person that's in the car at that time. And again, the officer making the statement uh, that he made. Chief, yeah, Mark. So you know, we're just seeing the video. We haven't yeah. had a chance to enlarge it. You know, it, it isn't really clear as you've said. But what does seem apparent is that uh, the gentleman is running away from the police officer. I know you say that he was shot in the side of the head, but it appears that he was running away. It does not appear that he was pointing. You can't even tell if he's actually holding a weapon, right? Yeah, I Mark, so what, I what don't. Do you say? What, I'm yeah, just asking go ahead. you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the family here, you have the whole community kind of asking when they see this video of the suspect running away with his back toward the officer, not, it does not appear that he is pointing the gun or at, at anyone at that time. How, how Mark, I think you're, you're jumping way out there to say, to, to get, draw the conclusion that you're drawing. And I don't, I don't think that you can, that you can actually do that. You talked about the injury yeah. of the, Vic, of the, uh, of Mr. Shirt in this place where the individual was struck. I don't know what Mr. Shirt was doing at that time, and I don't know exactly what the officer was doing. I know Mr. Shirt was running, and I know that the officer fired. But to draw any conclusions beyond that, just based upon the video, the video is all that we have. We, I, don't think we can, I don't think we can leap there yet, and we may get there as the investigation unfolds. But to, to make that, to make that uh, assumption, Mark, I, I'm not, I've been in this business long enough to know to not make assumptions in that space. It could jeopardize the investigation. It could, whatever outcomes anyone wants to see to include the family in this case, it could jeopardize the outcome of the investigation for me to stand here and say something that, 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 that destroys the case. I'm, I'm not going to do that. The video is the video is the video is what it is. Members of the public will see that same video and make a hundred different conclusions on that. But I think we have to allow the investigation to continue in this place. And if I could just follow up, the, yes. the, the, the handgun that you released is still a photograph of in yeah. the grass. That is the handgun that was found next to Mr. Sure. That, that is correct. And so in that space, we would do like a DNA analysis of the handgun. Uh, swab the handgun uh, to see if you know that handgun to ensure that that handgun was actually in, in or to find out to confirm who that handgun was in the possession of and that right now those swabs have been done and so forth but the DNA analysis on that have not come back yet so that is something again that we would need to confirm. Do you know yet if that, if that handgun had been fired? I don't it had not been fired it had not it's been fired statement. it had not we been know. fired and there wasn't no gun there I don't want to keep being ignored. I keep raising my hand. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate you. This is the second headshot police killing in two weeks. Are police being told aim to kill or aim to stop? That's one question. The second question, I want the police officer's name. And third, is anybody account footage of the policemen that arrived who's giving him, giving him CPR when we release? Because I got the video and no gun is in that video. So we want the body, is the other body cam footage of the, of the other police officers that was there will be released to the public. And because in that one, mm -mm. is no gun unless y'all remove the gun from the scene. 
And so I got that video yeah. with no gun. So I want to know so, if the body cam footage. Yeah, let me, let me answer your question, ma'am. So in the body worn camera footage that's been released today of the officer who was involved. I'm the, talking about the other officers. No, no yeah, I'm, what I'm, I'm no. trying to let answer you. I'm trying to answer your question, ma'am. I'm trying to answer your question. So, okay. So the first question you ask are officers train yeah, how right, officers right, are right. trained to shoot. Yeah, officers right. are trained to neutralize a threat, wherever the threat may be. That's how officers are trained. So uh, when you're talking about a person's body, I mean, no shooting is pretty, right? I don't care where the shot is. If it's in the foot, the hand, the finger, no shooting is pretty. When an officer uh, in their training, officers are, are trained to neutralize the, the threat. Until there's no longer a threat, officers will deal with the situation in that space. The second question that you had. The officer's name. That name has been released publicly. I believe it's out there now. Is that correct? Can you release the officer's name? Let me get, let yeah. me get to my materials. I think I have it here. I appreciate it. Thank you. The officer is Sergeant Ronaldo Otero Camacho. Okay, and the third question was, is the other and police officer's footage that was giving him CPR that's around him, that area, or the video that I got, is that going to be released to the public and the media? Because that the video I got, there's no gun there, unless y'all picked it up and took it somewhere. So I'm, I'm not sure which video you're referring to, no, but no, let me... You can look at it with the uh, body okay, 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 okay ma'am. Ma'am, I'm, I'm trying to answer your question, all right? So the video that's released today, after the officer fired the shot, if you look at the video, uh, as he's approaching Mr. Sherd, there's a circle around the gun that's in the grass on the ground. There's a, there's a, there's, that's in the video. At the point where you're talking about, and again, I'm not sure which video that you saw, at the point where CPR and all that stuff was going on in medical intervention, it, you probably didn't see the gun because that gun could have been removed okay, at that time. And that would not be uncommon, which is the reason why, part of the reason why we're going to do DNA analysis on the firearm. We're going to do DNA analysis on the bullets that go into the firearm to, so that we can see whether or not this firearm was actually in possession of someone. But that is part of the investigation. And again, I would hate to jump to conclusions and say that something is or is not when I don't know for certain myself. I'm going by evidence. And if we have the evidence, I'll say this is what it is. If we don't have it, I'll say we don't have it yet. So, so let me ask you this question. Yes, ma'am. There were there were no markings put down around that gun. Okay. There were there were no baggage of that gun, and I had and there's evidence that on that scene. So, so there are no markings, like literally when, when you guys recover a weapon or whatever, you put down the, the markings. Ma'am, I know that's that. That never happened. I, I understand what you're saying, but I've been in this business for 30 years, and I know we p people see a lot of stuff on TV, and that is not always what happens. Oh no, I have when a video. Video. Okay. Don't do that. There's a fire. There's Don't a fire. That. There's a firearm. There's a firearm. I would just refer everyone really to the video yeah. and what's in the video, and I and I'll leave it there. Okay, I'm going to take the last round of press questions. On, um, I'll start here, Sam, oh. Stephanie, Latin, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, yes. What's Sergeant Camacho's status as of now? He's on administrative leave. Great vacation. Stephanie. Mayor, it was, uh, it was said earlier that it's not believed possibly that there may be any violations in policy. Given what you saw, do you have any concerns about the circumstances, a person running away in a park? I don't know that uh, anybody has said that that has said that what we have said stephanie is that there is an investigation underway uh, the united states attorney uh, is responsible um, for investigating uh, an officer involved shooting in the district mpd of course does its internal investigation uh, as well and what we we can say for sure is that we don't know everything just looking at the video, and that is why the investigation proceeding accordingly is so important so that we can get to the bottom of what happened. Can you say, though, Mayor, what, if any, concerns you have with what you saw? Well, this is, this is what I, I know. Uh, you heard the chief talk about a shooting of two juveniles uh, in an area that has been plagued by violence. 
you heard a description, a detailed description provided by a citizen of people who saw the shooting, who saw weapons um, discarded, uh, and who saw people uh, flee the scene. You saw police officers see people flee the scene. And so it is the responsibility of this the police department to make sure that people who are using guns in our city uh, are dealt with by MPD in the justice system. So that is always uh, at issue. The reason why we have all of our patrol officers have body-worn cameras because we want to know what happens, we want our police officers to be accountable, and we want the citizens that they're dealing with to know that there will be accountability. They won't always provide 100% of the information that we need, and that is why it is important um, that this investigation proceeds. And I I can tell the community that it will proceed without interference and we will get to the bottom of it and we will work with the United States Attorney with whatever they need. Yes. Kevin Brown, TV, 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 question for the Chief. Uh, in the moments immediately after the shooting, it does appear that the man, Mr. Sherd, is handcuffed um, before medical aid is provided. Can you explain why that is and is that proper protocol? Yeah, so in some uh, instances when there are shootings, and I'm sure we've had other BWCs that release where this, this has been viewed, um, after a person has been shot, uh, officers, sometimes out of an abundance of caution, they'll place the person in handcuffs, uh, and then after placing the person in handcuffs, the scene is safe, there are no other issues or threats that they're having to contend with, uh, they'll remove the handcuffs and provide uh, first aid uh, or pr provide uh, medical aid in this case. So it's not that it's a uh, necessarily a hard and fast policy. It is our policy that we render first aid, but with respect to um, uh, handcuffing, it really kind of depends on the officer's assessment of the scene and their control of the scene, keeping in mind that prior to this, again, there were three individuals who had ran from the vehicle. Their whereabouts remain unknown to this day, and the officers, uh, again, I'm, I was not surprised uh, to see that, um, to see that there was a handcuffing to take place, then the unhandcuffing, and then the administration of first aid. Were you surprised to see them handcuff them, putting them in the ambulance in the front? Was that surprising to you? So uh, they handcuffed him and put him in the ambulance like this. So I don't think there's any situ any situation in this case that's that's that that is going to be um, uh, a situation where we say okay yeah that 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 that's acceptable when it comes to handcuffing after a person uh, has been shot again. That is all part of the investigation as we move it forward again to to say that it's this or it's that. Uh, at this point, it's too early. It's too early to do that, and doing that would jeopardize any administrative things that happen with officers who took whatever action they took in those cases. We must make. Sure, we have to make sure that we continue through the process of be, doing a thorough investigation in this matter to get to the bottom of everything. So, if your goal is to neutralize the threat, why did you all handcuff him before um, giving him life-saving measures? If you're going to neutralize the threat, because at that point he was already he wasn't a quote unquote threat anymore, which he never was because his back was turned. So if you shot him, they shot him and he was down and he was already not a threat at all. Why did they why did they handcuff him before they before before they so, gave the CPR? So they the, him in the back. So because in to, order to save a life, we have to give CPR immediately. Okay, I'm trying to answer your question, ma'am. So in that instance, again. These questions are questions that we have to ask of the members involved as we go through the investigation. For me to sit here and say, oh, well, they did it because of this or they did it because of that, I'd be, I, that would not be me being genuine with you. The honest answer is that. I don't know. So as we proceed through the investigation and we find out those things, all of that information goes to the U.S. Attorney's Office for their consideration. And if there's not any criminal prosecution uh, in that space, then we look at, in addition to that, those other actions that are in the administrative realm, like should they have done this or should they have done that? Or is there a policy change as a result of this because we shouldn't have done that? And those answers right now, I don't have those answers. For so where about those other two minutes? One second. I'm, I want to make sure that we get to the last questions, as I just mentioned. That's another family member. I, I understand. Okay. I want to get to the last questions, as we mentioned. Yes. Yes. Um, Mayor, uh, just your thoughts about the handcuff issue. I mean, the chief sort of addressed it. It's too early to tell. But, I mean, does that trouble you that someone is handcuffed in the way that he was? They put him in the, they put him in the ambulance in the handcuff. 
I I, I don't think I can add anything else to to what the chief has said on that. He asked how you felt about it. What is your opinion on it? As I said, I don't really have anything at this time to add to more than what the chief has said. All right, was was that our last question, Mark? A couple of off topics, real quick. Okay. Uh, the Defense Department has denied your request for the National Guard. Oh, I'm Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the first time that the request by the D.C. Mayor has been refused? Can you comment on, on that denial? I believe that it is, Mark. Uh, and I just reviewed before coming here, and obviously I was uh, more focused on a very uh, pressing matter of the body worn camera release. So I have had the opportunity to scan uh, that letter. Uh, and what I see is it may, we may uh, send an amended request. Um, the Department of Defense uh, highlighted a number of, uh, you know, a concern about the open ended nature of our request in the, um, the their ability to respond to it. So I want to give them some more specific parameters um, to better able uh, respond to our request. And then can I ask about the- No, don't do that again. Can I ask about the shooting at the library? Can we, we saw the charges were filed this morning. Chief, can you give us any update on what happened there? <clears throat> Yeah, Mark, um, that's, um, again, another uh, very unfortunate um, incident where someone lost their life and they should not have. Um, as you know, uh, we charged uh, the person doing the training in that case. We charged him last night. Uh, that individual retired from the Metropolitan Police Department, but he was acting in his personal uh, capacity, uh, you know, based upon uh, the review of, of what... Um, Based upon a review of the of the information that we have at this point, uh, it appears that his um, his actions uh, certainly contributed to uh, contrib contributed to the death and his actions in this case. Uh, there was some clear information in terms of witness information. Um, there was a video to help support it. And we, after consultation with the U.S. Attorney's Office, again, having that conversation with them, uh, the decision was made last night to charge him uh, criminally. Was so, that is possible. Uh, again, um, like we talked about in these cases, uh, he's certainly, he, the person arrested, uh, certainly has uh, a right to not make statements to self incriminate himself. So, he has not relayed that to us. We do know that in a training environment, um, there are props and, and, and um, uh, firearms that are not, uh, or firearm lookalikes that are uh, in a training environment that they were present uh, in this environment. But why and you know what kind of was in his mind at that time, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, Mark. And my last is, can anybody give us any update on the lightning strike at Lafayette? Yeah, so um, yesterday uh, evening uh, down at the Lafayette Square, uh, we had another unfortunate incident that resulted in the loss of life. Uh, there were four people that were struck uh, by lightning uh, down in Lafayette Park. And uh, shortly after that, there were first responders that were in close proximity that, that responded immediately to the scene from U.S. Park Police and as well as uh, U.S. Secret Service. Those four people were taken to the hospitals, uh, various hospitals for treatment. Uh, one of the uh, two people actually, uh, husband and wife, uh, 75 and, and 76 year old uh, husband and wife from who were who was visiting Washington D.C. from Wisconsin. Uh, unfortunately, they died of their of their uh, injuries this morning, and uh, we've made Mexican notification to the family, and we're we're dealing with that situation as well. Yes, yes. I just wanted to pivot back to the original topic, and this could be for the chief or for you, oh, sorry, Mayor Bowser. Um, this is a long process. Um, and I appreciate your honesty that we're early on in it um, and that it's going to take a while to sort through all the information. But can you tell us anything about a timeline for expected response from the U.S. Attorney General's office just to give a little more perspective about what we're in for? We wouldn't be able to do that. Um, and uh, my experience is that these investigations, they take as long as they take. We wouldn't want to say that they were rushed and we didn't get the information that we need, nor would we want to say that they took too long and the community was waiting, waiting for a response. So we do follow um, along um, with those timelines. 
and if we think that there's outside of what has happened in other um, situations, we would we would follow up more. Okay. All right. So we're going to have time for maybe like five more. Stephanie, Sam, here, here. That's four and five. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Stephanie. Um, Mayor, for you, and I also have a, a follow-up question for the chief as well, please. Um, Mayor, my question for you is in regards to uh, the rejection of the National Guard request. Um, you know, do you have any frustrations with them coming back saying no on the original request? And does this give any credence to what the Republican governors have been arguing? Well, I, I this is this is what I know, having um, been mayor for almost eight years, worked with three presidents, worked with any number of members of Congress. Uh, and having had the experience where the use of the D.C. National Guard was politicized, uh, that puts the district uh, in unsafe territory. Uh, so we want to continue to work with the Department of Defense so that they understand our operational needs uh, and to assure that any political considerations have been are, are not a part of um, their decision. When the mayor of the district says she needs or he needs in the past or in the future needs the D.C. National Guard to support um, the safe operation of our city, uh, we expect a fair uh, consideration. So having just looked at their letter, um, they appear uh, to think that, a, they appear to say that more specified requests would help them understand our needs. How long before Mr. Shirk was shot that CPR or aid was rendered? Mm -hmm. What is that time? I don't know the uh, in terms of you know how long was it in terms of minutes or seconds. I'm not sure how long it was. Um, I know the I, I believe the in, the raw footage of the video would have been um, shared with the family, mm -hmm. which would have showed that. But I'm not exactly yeah. sure how long that was the time in between the time mm -hmm. of the shooting and the time of the CPR. Can you describe significant time, moments? And well, I mean, significant is relative, Steph. If you're talking, if you're asking a family member, I'm sure, you know, like that significant might mean different to somebody who's on the outside looking in. I mean, so <laughs> I, I would just have to really just kind of say, you know, the video is the video. And uh, I mean, if there was any unnecessary delay, I mean, that's something that would be looked at as part of the investigation. For example, if officers were, you know, off talking on the phone or something and not uh, paying attention or trying to render aid to the victim, that's something that would be of obvious concern to us. So uh, I'm just not certain in terms of, you know, in terms of minutes or seconds, how long, how long it was. Why was he the only the officer on the scene. So uh, again, I will refer you back to the uh, to the video that's been released today. Uh, after the sh after the officer fired the shot, you see when he turns around the body worn camera, you see another officer who's who's walking up. I just will refer everyone back to the uh, to the video. Okay. Well, Sam Martin, last question. Okay, and no, I'm sorry, you have the last one. Yes. All right, three questions. Three questions. Uh, what do we know about? the dark vehicles that left the scene of Longfellow on Georgia Avenue at this point. Second question, um, how do you define a threat? You know, seeing as um, Kevin was running with his back turned, he was several yards away. And third question, uh, between this and the Karan Hilton Brown situation, from the outside looking in, there seems to be a pattern as far as police chases and somebody getting hurt, you know, vehicle pursuits, people getting hurt. So what's the conversation like in MPD as far as communicating with the community and forging relationships, things of that nature? So your first question, what was your first question again? The two vehicles that were at that Oh, right, what, what the status of those two vehicles. Okay, so we're asking the, publics for the public for their assistance in that space. Uh, we know that shots came from those two vehicles. Uh, we don't know who the occupants of those vehicles were. Uh, again, if there's anyone in the community who has information about who fired the shots uh, on Longfellow, certainly we know they were fired because we have two of our young people, two juveniles, uh, who got struck by gunfire. And But for marksmanship, they're still with us. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to continue to ask for the public's help uh, in that space. Uh, the second question that you asked was about uh, in terms of um, what was it about the what constitutes a threat? A threat. So the threat is is, is in the eyes of the officer who yeah. is dealing with the threat, where their life or someone else's life uh, could be in jeopardy at that point. Uh, so again, 
when you are looking through the lens of a camera, that's one lens. And when you're looking through the lens of someone's eyes, that's a, that's a different lens. I could, do thing, I could do something to, you know, the four people on this front row, you might perceive it as a threat. This person might this not, this person might, this person might not. And it really kind of, dep it really depends. But it's the reasonableness, uh, a reasonableness standard uh, that's used there to really um, uh, make the determination of was this officer's actions reasonable. And that's what the U.S. Attorney's Office is they review, they will look at law, they will look at the video, they will take look at statements, and they will look at all of that stuff before they make their determination about whether or not this is a criminal, uh, in, a criminal uh, thing that they will prosecute or whether or not this is something that will be handled administratively. Your last question about, you know, a, a, a pattern uh, of, of situations or police pursuits, you know, I would, I would argue in this um, particular instance and in any community, uh, what do we expect the police to do in situations where we have two juveniles uh, that are shot and we have a vehicle fleeing from the scene? That will, that, and the police are there in close proximity to when that vehicle is leaving. I don't think the parents of those two juveniles will say, hey, you know, I, I, I expect the police to just let whoever is, is and let's take the names out of it for a minute, but who's ever in that vehicle, if there's a possibility that those individuals in that vehicle or a person in that vehicle or whatever was related to this thing or not related, you know, like that's part of the investigation, right, that we have to, we have to know. So we work very hard uh, with our communities, our communities all across the city to try to build better relationships. Uh, we want to make sure that we do that, but I think it's really kind of unfair to say that police officers following a shooting of two juveniles in our community that police officers shouldn't pursue in that case. Was right, the pursuit authorized by the second question? Slight follow-up to the second question. So, right. uh, what, hold on a second. Uh, you asked three. Uh, Mark, so say it again. Was the, was the pursuit authorized by a supervisor? Not, not so the supervisor was the person who was involved in the pursuit, and it happened so quickly. <laughs> it happened so quickly. <laughs> it happened so quickly. The supervisors also have supervisors, Mark, but there's, there's a watch commander and so forth. Responding to uh, the call of a shooting and an officer who's receiving information from a community member who says, this is what I saw. Individuals are in this vehicle and they're fleeing the scene. And that vehicle is speeding off at a high rate of speed, going around the wrong way on the street. And the police officer gets behind that vehicle because it was a shooting and because these juveniles could have died and because they were shot and there's a probability that there could be firearms in the car, they would have been justified in the pursuit. I got it. Okay. Um, if I can switch the conversation. No, I'm, oh, were you next in the lineup? I believe so. No, Martin was next, and I think you were fifth. And then uh, I'm going to have to wrap up. Yes, Martin. So in the community briefing, you guys start with footage that actually came from a private residence camera that was on the porch looking out. Were there other residences that had cameras um, that had footage that might be useful? If so, would you release those? Would you release body cam footage from the other officers who were responding to the scene yeah. after the, the shooting happened? So we have released everything that we have so far in terms of the um, residential cameras. Um, some folks have cameras that, that don't work. Some folks have cameras that are uh, motion activated that don't come on. So we've released everything that we have uh, at, at this point. Uh, with, re with respect to the other officers who, are, who got arrived, I think um, it after. may have been mentioned at some point who arrived afterwards. After. Those officers, body worn camera, as part of the law and part of normal, or part of the practice, uh, those body worn cameras are not ordinarily uh, released because they were not the officers who were involved in the subject of the force. One. And then one last quick question since I have a chance. Um, the one thing we see before the shooting happens is the officer driving the vehicle and then pulls his gun out as yes. he's driving. Is that standard? Is it trained? Is it? expected so uh the officer where he pulled the gun out uh at the very it seems like to through the lens that i'm looking at it appears that he was at the very like at the very end uh after the vehicle had crashed uh i would really have to know that answer from him i can speculate why at that point he pulled the firearm out but i, I really really depends on what he says and i'm sure that that would be related to what he saw uh, at that time with respect to when yes, he pulled the firearm up. That's not sure. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Carmen Rodriguez from El Tiempo Latino. Former employees from Casa Rubí said that they report no payments and other irregularities to authorities before uh, we knew about the uh, what the, uh, the general's attorneys asked request. So has your office heard of any of this complaint 
And uh, also, Ruby Corrado stated uh, on an interview that, sh that she had to stop operation because your office did not uh, provide more funds. And what's your position on this? We have been, um, it's been some time since we discontinued uh, support of, of, or I'm um, actually, Laura, I'm going to ask you to talk to this because our issues with Casa Ruby didn't just happen um, in the last few weeks. We have been separating operations um, from the organization for longer than that. So let me ask Laura, I don't know if you have some of this on the top of your mind or, she, or a Director Zeilinger can certainly follow up with you. What I can say is that we paid invoices um, and that included salaries for staff and rent, and so matters uh, about money owed are things that are part of, um, I think, what is being investigated and looked at. So, um, the, but the district did not pull money while she was, while Casa Ruby was administering services under an ongoing grant. Any, they, there was, the program was wound down. The young people who are in the program we helped transition to other places for services, so that no one was left without services, and there was a there was a process around that that we followed. Thanks, Mayor. Appreciate it. Governor Abbott um, invited you and Mayor Adams to the border earlier this week. Have you responded to him at all? Your thoughts? Is this political theater on his part? And are you, in, a, in an essence? Uh, giving him some credence and giving Republicans some credence by calling on the National Guard to complain that perhaps you're overwhelmed. I'm not, I'm not talking about anything that is political in nature as it relates to how I operate the district's homeless services system. And I have done, regardless of Republicans in Texas or Democrats in, on Pennsylvania Avenue, what I need to do to run the city. And when we have a growing humanitarian crisis that we expect, that the federal government expects, is going to only worsen, I have got to deploy the resources that I need uh, to handle it. And we need our National Guard. If we were a state, I would have already done it. I would have deployed the National Guard. We also need a federal site uh, where uh, they, if, if there are going to be ongoing busloads of people who are stopping here on their way to where they're going, which is not here, um, that we need a site um, that the, uh, the government, uh, the non-governmental agencies, NGOs, they say, uh, can use to make that, that stop um, as humane as possible for people who are fleeing horrendous circumstances. In many cases, they're boarding buses having been lied to about what's going to be on the other end. Uh, and they're still not where they want to be. Uh, and so we, we really need federal coordination. Now, if the federal government's not going to do it, uh, they need to at least get out of our way and give us the resources that we need in, the, in our National Guard and a site. And we've even identified. We've helped them think about what those sites could be, including their army or armory, um, that, that could be used. Thank you, everybody.